Alright, so in this video, I've decided to try a heads up display in a Fiero, see how it is. Came across it on uh, Tom, Tom's Electronics. He uh, does the uh, digital gauges for the Fiero. Um, so I thought I'd pick this up and uh, see how it works. So the heads up display wasn't exactly what I thought when I got it in the mail. Uh, I thought that since Tom custom made the digital gauges for the gauge cluster that this is something that maybe he created uh, only to find out when I got in the mail it's, it's kind of a Chinese made knockoff um, it's okay um, you know you have to kind of customize where you want it in the dash it, it's gonna be a little awkward to place from what I can see um, but uh, here's uh, here's the packaging and it looks to be an AOO or ADD, I'm not sure. And even in the manual, it doesn't really tell you what those last two letters are, if they're O's or D's, but this is it. Um, it does do uh, your speed, it does your RPMs, it does your temperature, it does your volts. Now, with the temperature, I was a little disappointed. Um, it, it comes with its own sensor and uh, you have to wire that sensor in with a little T-coupler into your cooling system. Um, I'm not really interested in doing that for the main reason that most mid-engine cars, the engine's too far away from the gauge cluster to have a long enough run to do that, so I'd have to extend the wires and get this T-coupler and see even if it works. So for right now, I'm, I'm not going to use the temperature gauge on it. I'm just going to wire it in for the, the speed, the, the tachometer, and the um, voltage. So um, let's go in and uh, we'll take a look. I've already kind of pre-installed it just to test it out first to make sure you know it will at least work in some way, shape, or form. So I'm going to show you what I've done and uh, we'll uh, see how it works. Okay, so here's the heads-up display kind of sitting in the car, um, roughly about where it's going to be wired. Um, you kind of see it's got a little um, tachometer gauge here. You got your speedometer over here. It does have a, a light sensor. Um, not sure what it's used for. Couldn't get it to really do anything, like turn my lights on when the lights went dim. And this is about where I'll have it. I may move it closer, further from the windshield, depending on how high or low I feel it looks best for me in the car. Um, the further away from the windshield, the higher it goes up. Um, the closer it is to the windshield edge, um, the lower down it is. So I've got to find what works for me. Um, I've decided to put it over here next to the A pillar because putting it over on the other side, it was just kind of covering both the speaker grill and the defrost vent. Just wasn't really working. Here it's only at least partially covering the speaker grill. Plus it's easier to run the wires under the dash um, to uh, maintain the wires. You know, I just have to pull the, the speaker out and I can connect and disconnect it. I'll show you that in a second. Um, uh, but my original idea was to put it back here, maybe make a little um, ledge where it can sit behind the gauge cluster and project up. Um, I found that when I did that, it just sat really high uh, on the windshield. It was almost um, distracting on normal driving. So uh, putting it back there just had it way up high and it just, just wasn't working for me. So. Maybe over here, you know, it, it kind of projects up. It's, a, it's out of the way, so it's not always a visual obstruction. Um, so this is where I'm going to have it. Um, I'll do a little more tweaking, like I said, on, on position, but for the most part, it just is more convenient to have the wires run under the dash this way to look a little more professional than it is to have it over here and have the wires come up and under. Um, same thing with, you know, behind the gauge cluster, the wires just a little more awkward to try and wire in. So we're going to work our way into the car and I'll show you where to run each of the wires. Okay, this is kind of a panned out view of under the dash. I've got 
a few more wires than you probably would normally have under here. Um, so I'm going to kind of zoom in on what you need, but um, we're going to start with the um, speedometer, wiring that in. You're going to have to wire that into the VSS wire, um, which is found underneath the gauge cluster on the driver's side or the left side. So we'll hone in a little closer and I'll kind of go through that. All right, so here we are a little closer. Um, this is the clip that's underneath the speedometer and the gauge cluster. Um, we've got a couple wires here. I'll go through. Um, we've got this uh, purple with the white stripe. This is a VSS wire. And this solid yellow wire is also a VSS wire. Now originally I marked and wired in. Probably won't be able to see it, but you can kind of see it. Cut the wire there. I originally wired in the vehicle speed sensor to the purple with a white stripe. Um, wasn't getting any input. Um, the wire that you use from the harness on the heads up display is also purple. It just seemed like it was a match made in heaven. Apparently it didn't work in the Fiero, so I went to the other VSS wire, which is this yellow wire. You have another one that's uh, yellow with a black stripe. It's not that one. It is the solid yellow wire. I was able to get a signal out of that and it looked like it's working pretty good. Um, originally I soldered it in but I figured just as an experiment to make sure that it was working right I'd use this um, connector to connect the two but all the other wires are soldered in. Um, so yes the purple wire on the clip that you're going to have for the heads up display will actually wire into the yellow wire on the clip that is below the speedometer in the gauge cluster. Alright, for the next couple of wires we're going to go to the other side of the gauge cluster um, and we're going to tap uh, a couple of wires behind the tachometer. Um, now in the harness for the heads up display there's going to be an orange wire and that's your tachometer. We're going to wire that. We'll zoom in a little bit closer to the harness and see what kind of a shot we can get on it and uh, let you know how that goes. Back here it's really hard to see. It's really tight. Um, we have a solid white wire. Um, this is the tachometer wire that we tapped into. So we're going to tap the orange wire from the heads up display to this uh, white wire back here. I can't really pull enough slack out. Um, when I did this I originally pulled the whole gauge cluster out. I probably should have just left it out but um, I wanted to test it first. So, But this wire here is what we use for the tachometer. It's a uh, solid white wire. I recommend taking the um, gauge cluster out just to make things a little easier. Alright so the other wire that we're going to use over here or I'm going to use. Um, the heads up display comes with a light indicator so you know when your headlights are on. But with the Fiero you already know the lights are on because they're popped up. It's pretty obvious so I don't really need that indicator. So what I decided to do is convert it to a high beam indicator. So what I did is the heads up display light wire is green. Ironically the high beam wire in a Fiero is also green. So I've tapped the two together, which is also on the same harness as the tachometer. So you take the uh, green wire from both and clip them together. And that way you have a heads up high beam indicator, um, which you'll see once we get this thing all booted up. As for power and ground, the remaining two wires, you can hook those anywhere that's switchable with the ignition. Um, I actually went with a pink and black wire behind the gauge cluster here. It's a, uh, really difficult to see, but yeah. So any any basically any pink with a, a black stripe is a switchable power wire, and then ground anything black or the chassis works. So uh, let's hook this thing up and uh, see what it looks like. 
All right, now we're in the driver's seat. Let's uh, just do a, a preliminary boot up and uh, see how it looks. Now granted, I've not put the uh, included windshield film on it to help give us a crisper image um, just because I haven't really gotten to figure out exactly where I want it but not so bad right now and you know as you can see the further down you move it the higher it goes on the windshield and the closer you move it the lower down it goes so it's just a matter of preference on where you want it that's something I'm still trying to figure out I'm thinking maybe where down kind of low on the dash right in here It'll probably work out pretty nice it's off to the side a little bit so it's not an obstruction of view or distraction but it's still high enough up that I can see it without having to take my eyes off the road next test uh, we'll take it for a little test drive see how it looks all right now I'm going to do a review of the uh, heads-up display uh, I'm going to drive it around just the neighborhood and kind of give my thoughts on it and uh, share my experiences. Was it worth it uh, or was it kind of a flop? We'll find out. So go ahead, start it up and uh, see what we think. Alright, so here we are in my neighborhood. Um, we've got the film up for the uh, heads up display. I guess first uh, you know, first experience so far is the film's already starting to, to peel a little bit. Um, so I'm, I'll probably try and shave it down, make it a little bit more um, precise. I guess this is more of my angle on what you'd see. Um, but the film, I don't know, just uh, initial reaction. It does help you see the heads up display a little bit better, but um, you know, it. it seems to be a distraction having that film there especially at night um, and bright sunny days today's pretty good um, it's kind of hard to see but the other thing I've noticed is I have to get above 12 miles an hour in order for it to actually start to read once I get up there it seems to be pretty good so I'm up to 15 and that's pretty much exactly what my speedometer is reading up oh, I drop down if I drop below, we'll say 10, 12 miles an hour, it just kind of drops right to zero. So accuracy seems pretty good um, from 10 miles an hour on up. But, you know, uh, also on bright sunny days, today's a pretty bright day. Um, but I've, I've kind of ridden it around a little bit on brighter days where it's actually hard to see. Um, so, seems to be really good at night, bright sunny days, it's kind of washed. Uh, if I take the film out, you kind of, you can see it, but you get this double image um, that really uh, makes makes it a, you know, a little harder to tell, but you know, I could, I could live without the film, but the film definitely makes it a little, a little clearer. Um, so overall, my uh, my thoughts are: I paid 250 for it. Don't think it's worth 250. It is cool to have, but it does have some drawbacks. Um, I will say, with the tachometer, um, it's kind of small. So at a quick glance, I'm not going to know what my RPMs are if I really cared. But um, and in my case, the the tachometer is off so I'm not going to fault the, uh, the device for that my tachometer is off I was hoping it was just the tachometer itself but it looks like uh, it's not because my tachometer is reading what this is so it looks like it's pretty much accurate so it is cool I don't know if it's really worth the uh, $250 price tag um, but you know, it's in, I'll keep it, and uh, that's that. All right, so yeah, this is the uh, heads up display, and you know, uh, you be the judge, but 
seems okay to me. Like I said, I think it's a little overpriced. Definitely appears to be Chinese made and not the greatest quality. Uh, I'd probably go with something that looks a little more stock. I know they do the um, Bonneville uh, heads up displays and stuff that you can use from other GM cars and kind of work your way into the dash. But for a portable device, it's okay. So that's my take on it. Uh, you know, if it seems worthwhile, the link's below on the product, and you're more than welcome to pick it up and have it installed or install it yourself. Thanks for watching.